Major Gregory Keane is here to take up the thread of the story once more. Here in the cellar of the house at Cape Camaray, bound hand and foot beside the man I came to this country to trace, the affair of the deadly nightshade comes to its climax. Something like four hours have passed since I sailed into the cove. Mike Guzik is dead. I don't know what took place, but he met Tom Cutts on the highway and managed to get back here, only to die. Carlotta Magnani, with no way left of escaping from here, is covering her tracks. She's poisoned her lover, Felix Huberman. And now it's my turn. Kesselring and I have to go, so that there will be no one left in existence to connect her with the nightshade ring. A moment ago, she told us that Huberman was already dead. And then the door opened at the head of the cellar stairs. A figure stood there swaying. And the house seemed in that instant suddenly colder and more remote. From Cutts, from Sherry Reed, from Henry Murray and his CIB men who are too far away to help us now. There's the bridge, Inspector. We have a mile to go. Keep your eyes, skinned, Elliot. Right, sir. Yes, I'm not mistaken. The road's straight along here, and there are the tall trees on each side. Good for you, Sherry. Here comes the S-bend up ahead. How much further do you say? About a hundred yards. You can't see the narrow road from the highway, so be careful you don't run right past it. Blink your lights off and on once for the chaps behind, Elliot. Yes, sir. That's is still there. You'll have heard and seen it's coming. Two cars flat out, following close together. It would make him think. We're just about there. We're too close. Break hard. That the road just in there, Sherry? Yes. Paul, with me. You stay there, Sherry. Right. Tom Cutts. Police here. Inspector Murray. You about? Cuts! You hear anything, Paul? Yeah. Frogs. All right, Sherry, out you get. We'll cross the road. Stay close behind me. We don't know what we're getting into here. Now then, give him a call. Cuts! It's me, Sherry! If you're around, come on out. He's not here. All right. Tumble out, everyone, and have a quick scout around. Sherry, where are you going? I'm only looking. Come along. You get back into the car. Sherry, come out of those bushes. In this moon, we're all too easily seen. So, so it's something else. What have you found there? Blood. There, at the top of the stair, stands Huberman, with Carlotta half-turned, head up, eyes wide, frozen. She must think he's a ghost, but ghosts don't talk. Carlotta! Stand back, Felix. Stand back. Take it, Huberman. The gun's not loaded. I thought I was dead. I will be in a minute. But I'm going to strangle you first. Get down the steps, Huberman. You can do it, man. You can last. I can last. No, Felix, no. Keep back. Everything I've got. I fooled you. That's what I did. Now, I'm going to choke the life out of you. He comes weaving and swaying, one foot after another, eyes staring blindly, down the stone steps of the cellar. He's like a sleepwalker. He's almost dead, but his will's driving. Get away from me, Felix! Felix, over my nose! No! Now he's standing in front of her, trying to raise his arms. She's transfixed, staring. In the harsh light from the naked bow, these two, Carlotta Magnani and Huberman, are face to face. But now I can see it, and so can she. Yes, she can see it too well. Now her lover is standing so close. Felix. <laughs> Your eyes are open so wide. You can't see me at all now, can you? Uh, uh, Your pupils uh, are distended. You can't see me, a key, or anything. Uh, Here is my throat. Why don't you raise your hands to it? Uh, it's too late, uh, isn't it, Felix? 
too late. I'm sorry, Keen. It's your move. Without a sound, he's crumpling at her feet. And I don't have to be told that Felix Huberman, the one-time brigade major of Desert Infantry, the chief of the security bureau, the captain of gangsters, is dead. Mm. The seconds tick by while Carlotta stares down at him. There can be no more respite now. monstrous trio caught up with Tom Cux. We can't be sure. Don't think about it. Did you hear the instructions I gave the men? No. Oh, Murray. According to the truck driver Keen followed from here, the house is on the beach six miles from the highway. Yes, I told you that. We're driving in with the lights till we get to the edge of the pine forest. It's before we get to the brow of the hill, going down to the beach, we're switching off and relying on the moon. You're lucky the rain cleared. When we start going downhill over the last half mile, we're going to creep down in neutral with our engines off. Both cars should be able to get right on top of the house before they know we're about and rush them. And forgetting the Alsatian dog. We're going up close in the cars and rushing them anyway. We'll have a certain element of surprise. How far have we come from the main road, Elliot? Five and a ten miles. Lights out any minute. What's that? Where? Side of the road. Hold it here. Hold it. All right, you. Out from the trees. Come on out where I can see you. You should keep out of the moon, Inspector Murray. You're right in my sights. Cut! Here I am, miss. At the foot of the tree. Oh, cut you, Angel. You're alive. You're actually alive. Yeah, and I'm flaming glad to see you. We expected to find you on the highway. Is there any news of Major Keen? I'm on my way to get some right now, sir. Well, you may as well get up off the ground now, Cuts. We want to press on. You can give us the score as we go. Yes, sir. Well, come on, Tom, up you get. Uh, yes, miss. Uh, you see, it's uh, it's a bit awkward, like. What's the matter? I've, uh, I've got myself a broken leg, miss. Uh, got it back on the main road. Any two men, at the double. Sir. What happened, Cuts? Mike Dusick showed up. My guess is he was trying to nobble Carl out of another car for the one the Major and me pinched off her. Never mind what he was there for. What happened? Well, we had a bit of a scrimmage. As a matter of fact, it was the fight of a lifetime. Well, I don't want another one like it. I got a good grip on him to start off with, but he came to light with a knife. He had to lose me grip or get it between my ribs. It was like fighting a ruddy tank. I managed to stab him a couple of times at the end, but not before he'd busted my leg. You and Keen are quite a pair of characters, aren't you? How long ago was this, Cuts? Uh, a couple of hours or so ago, I'd say, miss. You've been crawling along mile after mile with one leg dragging along behind you? Well, I couldn't sit still, could I, miss? Uh, if they needed another car so bad, they must know their boat's been put out of action. And it's ten to one they've got the major. We'll leave a man to fix a rough splint and we'll press on without you, Cuts. I'd say you've just about done your share. Oh, I wouldn't mind coming along. Don't be a fool. You'll finish up with a leg that'll never mend if you don't watch out. All right, everyone. Everyone in but Jacqueline. Same drill as before, but no lights from now on. Get going. Felix must have wanted very much to leave. To have dragged himself from the other end of the house. I can imagine no greater compulsion. Get his fingers on your throat, a man could rise from the dead. <laughs> Did you think for a moment he was going to save you, Keith? Carlotta, I could see his eyes, too. And what did they tell you? They told me the poison you gave him. Yes, it has many names. Almost as many as I have had. If there was more time, I should tell you about myself. But I must make haste and set the stage. There is no haste, Carlotta. Why shouldn't I tell you? The police won't hear about Kate Cameron till 8 o'clock in the morning. That's seven hours from now. I believe you. If you are merely trying to postpone the end... You would not try to deceive me with anything so obvious. How well we are in harmony. What a pity we could not have been. Perhaps if our stars had been different, you and I could have been together instead of Felix Huberman. Hmm. So that one night, trapped like this in some other lonely house, I could be given poison with a kiss. I did not kiss him. Oh, yes, you did. I can see you. To be sure. You wanted to make sure he drank his venom quickly, and so you kissed him. You gave him poison with a gesture of love. 
That's what you are, Carla. I'm poisonous. Like the plant you named your gang of. Are you hoping to enrage me, Keen? What difference would it make? Let me hear you say it. You gave Felix Huberman atropine, didn't you? Yes. Atropine. Belladonna. Deadly nightshade. I'm keeping this woman talking while I watch the madness glint in her eyes. I'm keeping her talking with the singleness of purpose that comes of despair. Huberman lies dead on the floor. Kessel ring huddles numbed in a corner. Carlotta is loading her pistol. But there is someone moving about outside. Entering the house at Cape Camaray. Listen for the next chapter in this story of intrigue Deadly Nightshade.